So I want to give you, I brought you an illustration of government. And because I've been involved in different levels of government, I, I brought you some boxes. And each box is here to represent something that you will retain with you for the rest of all your other meetings, James, they'll be saying, I remember the lady with the boxes. Now, this is a very, very interesting story here. What was this? I was there, I remember the lady. The lady with the boxes, she's the lady with the There you go. <laughs> You're all invited to the inaugural ball. <laughs> So you were wondering, what is in this first little box? And even though you may not be able to see this very well, this is a figurine, a delicate and expensive, valuable figurine of a person with a dog. And then that's really, I'll, I'll even, well, I can't pass it around because I won't get it back in time for the next, but here's the, here's the point. This represents us. We are valuable. And we not only have enough, everybody here tonight had enough mental capacity and wherewithal that you dressed yourself <laughs> and you, you brushed your hair and you take care of yourself, and you have enough love left to give to others. And that's what the dog represents. Every, not everybody loves dogs as much as Barb, but when you have love in your heart, you have enough to share. And, and that's what makes a great community and the expectation of the norm that we take care of ourselves and we take care of others too with the surplus. Now, what makes this one interesting? It represents self-government. And, and that's great. It's charming. But when self can't take care of self, then we have family. This box represents family. And, and family is supposed to be there to take care of you. I have a son who's 21. And he was about to do something idiotic. And I said to him, young man, huh? it wasn't that. Don't, don't get scared trying to imagine. I was going to ride his bike without a helmet, something like that. And I explained to him, young man, you know if you get into an accident and get brain damage the rest of your life, I'm going to have to take care of you. And that's true. That's what mothers do for their sons who do things. We love our kids. We love our families. I will take care of my mother because my mother took care of me when I was a baby. I want to take care of her when she's elderly. And that's what makes it beautiful, having people who love each other. And you'll notice this family box is very pretty. Sometimes people can't take care of themselves there like an alcoholic or something, and they need other support. So the family's there. If family cannot handle it, cannot take care of the individual, and is in trouble, this box here represents church. And I'm just so you can imagine, some families have dysfunctional problems. Some families are very alcoholic or, or can't function in, or have habits that have drained them of any dollars, of funding, ability to support themselves. Um, this is church. Church has food pantries, a lot of churches do. But the thing church can do is it can add the moral dimension. So if, for example, you have five babies with five different men, church can say, uh, let's talk about what's causing that. If you're not a widow four times over and you've got a lifestyle that is promoting something that's not good for you or for those children, church can say, let's get to the root cause instead of just spending money at the symptom. Government doesn't do that. If you want to have and I, I live closer to St. Louis, and maybe in Columbia it's not as extreme, but in the urban core there are examples of people who live
live in a lifestyle that's costing the taxpayers a lot of money and nobody ever questions them and they don't even realize that it's their choices that are causing the problem. So church can do that. If church fails, this is community. Now, what's great about community is community it can, is bigger than church. It can do big things. A tea party is a community. People come from different churches, from different backgrounds, from different walks of life, different motivational factors. If somebody needed a kidney transplant and needed us to put on a fundraiser for some reason, community can do those kind of big things. And that's special. And one thing you noticed about all these boxes is they're beautiful. They're pretty boxes. They're charming boxes. They come with love. Love is driving the train. Caring about each other feeds a part of the soul that you just can't get from government. No, no. Government is this box that I saved for last. And you wonder, why did the representative bring such an ugly box? It was intentional. It's first problem, you notice, it's oversized, folks. <laughs> it's disproportional. And, and so we throw this, all the communities go in the big ugly box, and you notice it says, made in China. <laughs> now see, government has to be like a vending machine. It has to be neutral. Government gives without love, and people receive without thanksgiving, with no gratitude. How many of you have ever put money in a vending machine, and it doesn't give you your candy bar, and then you pound on it, and you feel justified? That's, you got to pound sometimes, you know? <laughs> Maybe it works, you know? That's what's happening. The people are pounding for more money, and folks, we cannot afford it. We are out of money. We are broke. There's still more where that came from because there's still taxpayers, but for the most part, what's driving the train is our social welfare budget. Missouri spends about a third of its budget just on social welfare. We spend about another third on education and we're not getting a bargain there either. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, the last third is the essentials of government. So if you want to think about the budget in thirds, you realize government didn't actually even set out to do social welfare spending. That wasn't our mission when we incorporated, oh, let's do this so we can do welfare. No that we have bigger motives, and yet that is becoming bigger all the time, and the reason it is is because families are breaking apart in a bigger proportion than ever before. Not just breaking apart, but more and more families are not even forming to begin with. And that's costing us. The average single mother in Missouri makes the, <laughs> receives a benefit on welfare equivalent to having a $42,000 a year job. By the time you add up the temporary assistance for needy families, the food stamps, the Section 8 housing, the WIC, the babysitting, and the um, Medicaid, medical insurance, how can you incentivize somebody to go, you're not going to go from minimum wage to 42000 a year. And so we have a huge problem where people make up to a certain amount and then they decline the opportunity to continue on up the ladder. And what we've really done is we've hurt our own dignity. 